Welcome back to another mystery box opening with Big Bob's MTG, and today we have a special guest, Little Bob. Hello. Little Bob's going to join me today on this pack opening. We're going to open this together, and we're going to see what we get in our mystery box today. So we'll get into it. And go uh, double up on these packs. Alrighty, here we go. We're not going to have any rhyme or reason or how the packs are taken. We're just going to open them. Get them good. Get them done. Whee! So, first and foremost, here we go. Box number one. Now, last box opening, I got a uh, Githrog and uh, a Sliver Hive Lord. Or, I don't even know what it was. Uh, sliver, hive, hive Mind Sliver Lord. I don't know. I love the Sliver creatures. So, here we go. Uh, Voice of Providence is... I'm only going to stop, really, at the ones that I know are high value. Which is not too many, because I am not too sure about these. <laughs> uh, these are a little bit beyond my knowledge base. Alright. Magus of the Moat. I know that one's a good one. Uh, Pre Precursor Golem. And Harmonic Sliver. Harmonic Sliver is our first foil. Two rares, and then we got that guy. Second one coming up. I don't, I don't know if they'll bring back slivers yet. I remember this Coalition Honor Guard back in the day. That's an older card that was reprinted a few times. Right. Uh, Reflector Mage. Ashnod's Altar. Phantom Centaur is a good one to get. Grave Crawler. And Echoing Decay is our second foil. So, three rares so far. A bunch of uncommons and commons. And turning it over to Bob. It's not actually a bad pull. Three years and two packs. When you have the potential of getting uh, three rares or three mythics per pack. Yeah, that's true. Use your man lessons. No. <laughs> I don't really know if any of these are good because I haven't been in magic long enough to know. So my dad knows if some of these are good or not. Some. Some. Kagoos! I love Kagoos. We're actually in Metamorph. Yeah. That's cool, you can pay two life instead of paying this spot. Yeah. Trading Post, I know, is a good one. And then Spring Jack Shepherd. Next pack. Dark Steel Garrison from Future Sight. That's an old school card that they tried a different, <laughs> a different yes. uh, methodology. To it. They tried a different card layout. So we're trying to see like which one's better and if people like to do layout. Three rares. So that's pretty good. Your turn, Dad. All right. Let's dive it in here. I'm trying to open these packs as well as possible. So, Soul Perry, Minute Guard, Bewilder, Reckless Imp, Noxious Dragon. Ugh. Seal of Strength. Of vengeance. So that's sore in there, standing there. That's cool. Phantasmal Dragon. Whelming Wave. 
and the Spell of Enforcer. Spell Tithe Enforcer. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be people yelling, Hey, that card's good too! That card's good too! Typically my uh, my buddies that work over at uh, World of Games 2.0, when they see my videos, they're always like, Hey, that one was really good. Why didn't you talk about that? And I'm like, I had no idea. Icy Manipulator. Ooh, Guilt Leaf Palace. Ooh. Temporal Mastery. Take an extra turn after this one. Exile Temporal Mastery. Miracle. You may cast this card for its miracle cost when you draw it, if it's the first car you drew this turn. That's really good. That's cool. And then Spell Weaver Volute. So that is Mythic number one. Back to you. Maybe I'll pull you. Time. <laughs> well, this is a big brain card for you. Yeah. Yeah. Enchantment. Get plus five intelligence. Death Hood Cobra. Uh, Balot, no. Okay. Sanctuary, back from Apocalypse. That's a cool Cage Sun. Cage Sun, that's cool. And a Construct. Or Memonite. Let's see what's in this pack, shall we? I looked at the shields going in that one. I have this card. It's pretty good. That was from Amon Cat, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. 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 I had it in my white deck. Ah. When I when I first started magic. Mm -hmm. Most people start magic when it comes down to modern. And modern is a pretty easy one to get into because you have the most the most cards available to you. Yeah, but you can't go into like tournaments at the very beginning because everybody. Well, you could. You could. It, it, it's it's all a matter of uh, uh, how much do you want to get your butt beaten down in a modern tournament? Because the modern tournaments that I played, I even just brought a standard deck just for you know shits and giggles, right. and <laughs> I got flogged. Yeah. Rona's Monument. Yep. Oh, there we go. There's a Mirage one. Floodgates. What does it do? Uh, in Floodgate, if Floodgate gains flying, bury it. Bury. Bury it. Bury it. Yeah. Uh, if Floodgate leaves play, it deals each non-blue creature without flying one damage to each two island for each two islands you control. Oh, that's weird, but that sounds like a super good card. Stock up on a bunch of islands and then just go, oh yeah, by the way, it has flying and you and everything is dealt, you know, six. Yeah. <laughs> but that can mean you have 12, mono, <laughs> 12 islands. Yeah. Do you had a giant? You played two of the giant once. You did? Well, Went to the Magic Fest. Yeah. You went two and one, so that wasn't bad. When two headed giant attacks, flip two coins and both come up heads. Two-headed giant gains double strike until end of turn. If both come up tails, two-headed giant gains menace until end of turn. That is good. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. Rolling's four. So you can put a charge counter on it. 
and then you can tap and remove a charge counter to add any one mono of any color you want to pull that one. That's yeah. actually easy. So, you can pull the Mirage one out too. Yeah, pull that up for the next one. I don't think it's a rare. I don't know if it's a rare, being that it's Mirage. They didn't have symbols there, so. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have the rarity symbols tied down yet. Right, veteran swordsmith, excavator elephant, predict, man of war. Um, let's see here, guy's blessing, one of my favorite cards to play with, because if it gets put in your uh, graveyard from your library, you just shuffle your whole library into your deck. Yes. Love it. Warden of the Eye, etched oracle. Master Transmuter, that's one of the high price ones. That's one of the good ones that you want. All is Dust, Ravenous Trap. Alrighty. Alright. A little less than halfway through our packs here. They made these things apparently out of Teflon or Kevlar, so they're nearly impossible to open, so that's always fun. See, now I don't feel as bad those hats. <laughs> Every other video I've watched of these pack openings have been an absolute struggle to even get them open. Avalanche Riders, Beast Master's Ascension, and Reki, the history of Kamigawa. Whenever you play a legendary spell, draw a card. Now that's a good card. That's a fun one to have. I wish they made more level up, because I think this concept's pretty cool. Base. Oh, a new one from... Uh, Throne. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was like, wait, what is it? Diminish! Tiny beast! Yep. <laughs> Insect warrior. Aether spell bomb! Looks pretty cool. Oh, wait. Helm of Awakening? Yeah, what does it do? All spells cost one generic mono plus to play. Ooh, Ooh, that's pretty good. That's actually. also them too, though, so you yeah. kind of have to play it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a rare, so. Yeah, put it down at the right side. Teferi's yes. Protection! $35 card right there. Yeah, you pulled that. I did, and I sold it directly too. to them because I know that the prices are going to change a bit. Yeah. Um, and then the. Oh, look, a Wall Strider, but pre, <laughs> pre Theros Beyond Death. Yeah. Right? He does the exact same thing. Sacrifice creature, scry one. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm going to take the fairy out of there. That was a good pull, man. Yeah. That was a good pull. So. Whenever these decide to open, it'll be really cool. I'm just saying. Swoop. All right, new sleep frog, grim discovery, Bombard. And I don't know why, but this one reminds me of like uh, Kung Fu Panda. Uh, what was it? Two? I think it was Kung Fu Panda Two, where that uh, peacock, a white peacock, was trying to shoot him with a cannon. Grim contest. Uh, trepanation blade and hornet's nest. I've already pulled one of these, and I actually like this card. I want to actually see if there's some way to make this into something more because making all these little green insect tokens when they're when it's dealt damage would be hilarious. And lantern of light it looks like a lantern is made entirely out of lightning bugs. Or lightning eyeballs. I don't know. Each player plays with the top card of his or her library revealed. You can sacrifice. The target player shuffles his or her library. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a cool card you have. Bye. 
<laughs> Goodbye. Calculated dismissal, distortion strike, reckless strike, some really bad vapors. If if anybody else has any problems with people vaping like I do, you know, do you have to produce an entire cumulonimbus cloud every puff you take? <laughs> Five mana to gain two life and draw a card. It's a bit much, but it's a two. It's a 1-3 flying creature for two mana, so that's not too bad. Thran Golem, I remember this guy back in the day. Theros, Bowl of Nelia, uh, attacking creatures you control have Death Touch. Oh, paired with something like Veraska from War of the Spark, where all creatures that have Death Touch, if they deal damage to a player, get a plus one counter. There you go. <laughs> uh, Mirian Crusader. And Glittering Wish. Glittering Wish is a good card to pull. I'm really excited about that. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty good. One of the first cards I ever pulled. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, sorry, I I'm not really looking at these cards a whole lot, but really like the art style back then. A little more visceral, a little yeah. more realistic and fun looking. Ooh, violent ultimatum. Destroy three target permanents. It's a bit spendy, but it seems pretty good though. I'm sure there's a way to cast it though for free. Yeah. I'm sure there's a way to like run it out real quick and also have them be like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Color uh, in the sky somewhere. Uh, Makes two two breaks. Yeah. Whenever you cast an instant or sorceries spell, create a two two Drake token with flying. That's pretty good. Flash. Scrib Ranger. I don't know how to pronounce it. I get the Scrib, so thanks to him. Um, next pack. Conspiracy had a lot of good cards, but I haven't seen my like, Conspiracy Rebel is a good deck. Huh? Oop, what's that? To support two. The two 1-1 one -one counters on each of up to two target creatures. Well, it's sort of like, uh... What is your name? Uh, in one of the spark, yeah, Vivian's... Yeah, Vivian ability. gives two counters as well. Ooh. Yeah, I played someone with this, and it was super mean. <laughs> Toothy vagina guy? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Goblin Barrows. Black Knight. Decree of Justice. Put X44 Angel Creature Token to a flying into the battlefield. Holy cow. Cycle. cycle. Decree of Justice. You may pay X when you do... Put X number one one white soldier creatures creature tokens onto the bottom. Nice. That's pretty good. Ooh, there we go. Amy lift of vigor. Whenever a permanent enters the battlefield, tap taps the un tap and under your control untap it. <laughs> so yeah. Amulet of Vigor is a pretty good one, especially with all the tap lands, especially if you can imagine 
gates. Oh, yeah. All the guild gates that come into play tap, or even those uh, burn lands that you can either pay mount, pay your life to have them untapped. I use them all the time in the Magic Arena. All right. Let's see, Metallic Rebuke, Dung, Dune Beetle. I almost said Dung Beetle. But it does look like a big Dung Beetle, doesn't it? Courier, Invigorate, <laughs> Belligerent Brontodon. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to his toughness rather than his power. So that's fun, but he's a he's a big boy to get out. Six, four six for seven mana. Another Brimstone Dragon. We got this one last box opening as well. So I know that one's in the, the realm of, of goodies. Target player discards X cards at random. Ow. Wow. Mind shatter. That's a pretty good one. Zer's Weird Weirding? Eighth edition. <laughs> Players play with their hands revealed. If a player would draw a card, he or she reveals it instead. Then any other player may pay two life. If that player does, put that card into its owner's graveyard. Otherwise, that player draws the card. Wow, that's a super mean card. Kind of, uh, hey, I own you now. Yeah. So, is that pack one? Yeah, yeah. pack one. We're going two and two here, so I just wanted to make sure that I'm not shortchanging him on a deck or make sure that I'm on the right one. Get a little distracted from all these delicious sweets. Fireball. Basking Rootwalla. Back in the day, this card was just amazing because you figure out ways to discard things right away. Madness of Zero. So if you discard this card, you can pay its mon madness cost and just throw it into play. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. Or you can... What was the card? There was a, a 1 cost card that you, you put down a black mana, you pay it, each player discards a card, you discard this card, and put it into play. <laughs> and then the next turn you play a green and swing in for three. Yeah, I like this card a lot. I'm just going to put in... Where should we put in? Right here. Alright, so this is from the commander deck. Uh, Bears Champion. Or Companion, sorry. Bears Companion. When Bears Companion enters the battlefield, put a 4-4 four, four green bear creature token onto the battlefield. Oh, bless your face off. Alright. Dominus Fealty. I got this one before as well. Uh, mirror Entity. Uh, changeling until X. Pay X mana until end of turn. Creatures you control have base power and toughness of X, X, and gain all creature types. Holy crap. That is a fun one. Uh, Sakura Tribe Scout. Uh, you may put a land card from your hand into play by tapping her. Ooh. That's a delicious little piece. All right, you're up. All right, come on, Mana Crypt, $180, come on. How can you hold it? Well, I think it's down to like 90 bucks now, but it's still ridiculous compared to some of these other costs. Yeah. Mana Crypt is mythic. Now, we've only gotten one mythic, one mythic really? You know, from what I've seen too, trying to map out these decks, there could be uh, a method to how the mythics are printed. So we could be, there could be one mythic on the top stack on the left hand side, all the way down there's another mythic. So the way we could be opening these packs too, could be uh, the way we're doing it. Someone got all the dragon balls in this one. <laughs> Summon Shenron. Yeah. Trail of Evidence. Dark Current, that's a new one from uh, Guilds. Yeah, so it's standard. Ooh, you pay two life instead. Yeah, yeah. Deal one damage, target creature or player. Ooh. There's a whole set pretty much around this. Yep. Destructor Destructor Dragon. Dragon. Now, what I would be, this, this gut shot one, I'd be curious to see if uh, that's considered paying life. 
because there, I have a deck in standard right now built around paying life and putting blood counters onto one of my enchantments. So yeah, it'd be pretty, good to investigate. I'm pretty sure it is. Explore. Demonic disciple, draconic disciple. Sorry, dragons are much different than demons. <laughs> Cauldron, Cauldron of Souls. Ooh. Ooh. Choose any number of target creatures. Each of those creatures gains persist until end of turn. When it dies, it had no minus one minus one counters on it. Return it to the battlefield under its owner, owner's control with a minus one counter. Ah, so it's pretty much like an escape almost. Not really, actually, no. <laughs> well, I, I would say use it like this. You go... You, right before the end of their turn, or right before the end of like combat step, like when they declare blockers and you're about to kill a whole bunch of their creatures, tap it, name all of their creatures. Then when their creatures die, something occurs. Ah. So like, I don't know if you gain life, you draw cards, if an opponent's creature dies or something like that, or what if whenever your opponent plays a creature, this happens, etc., etc. If you give them persist and they don't come back into play all of a sudden, and then get minus one, minus one counters, and then die again to trigger oh. everything again, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 guess, green, I don't know what that word is. Remorse? Whenever an opponent discards a card from his or her hand, you may, you may draw a card. Oh, that mm. sounds super <laughs> <laughs> that sounds mean. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull from this side, and I'm gonna kill those two packs on the left hand side here. Now, come on, Monocrypt. If I'm right, actually, you know what? Before I get into this, I'm gonna see if we missed any mythics in here. Uh, if we did, no, no, no mythics at all. So we have one mythic out of an entire box so far. So that's cool. Pressure point. Uh. Watch all the mythics be on with the bottom packs. Halbred. Lightning Helix. Deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. I like that. That's good. Especially for white and uh, white and red. Now think if you could uh, use this with Hornet nest and have feather in play so you deal down three damage to it and it would return to your hand at the end of the turn Ristic study that's a good one right there coat of arms whoo and uh drog skull captain uh flying other sprite creatures you control get plus one plus one and hexproof that's that's a that's a tasty little dish there coat of arms i know is a really good card to get and here we go. Last one in the far left stack. I'm calling it all the blast packs are gonna be mythic. You think so? I'm just gonna skip all this then. And uh, go straight there. Venom sliver. Sliver sliver of creatures you control have death touch. But think about using the changeling with that. Oh yeah. Hot soup! On the call. What mythic creature is Mikolith, this? Uh, what, what? What, what mythic creature is a sliver? Like, it's a sliver. Oh. <laughs> yeah, slivers are slivers. Uh, fungus, devour two. Beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token for each of the plus one plus one counters on my clock. I have had this one used on me. I think in uh, Arena, they brought this back for kind of some fun, and yeah, it was nasty. Delay, we got another one of those. So I want to pull that one out because I like that card. Okay, you're up. You're gonna fill the middle one there? Yep. Ghost guards. Whoa. For a second, I thought that was Fib. Fib it one. might be. I don't think so. You don't think? Yeah, it looks exactly like him. Yeah, Fibble, but Fibble, but the, yeah, but he's he a, is a humunculus. Yeah. He's a legendary creature, though. But 
Who knows? Is Fib the only one of the species? Oh, that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> he just shows up everywhere. He's just the only lost one. <laughs> yeah. That's why he shows up and everything. He is actually a cardinalist too, in this set. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Which, it's not like I don't have a ton of them. Sapphire Charm's a good one yeah. to pull from. Which set is that? Uh, the tree one. Oh, oh great. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that I pulled one of my other rares on. Yeah, Mirage. Yeah. That's a Mirage symbol. Choose one, target player draws a card at the beginning of the next, tur next Up. turn's upkeep. Where target creature and opponent controls phases out or target creature gain flying until a new turn. I don't know what it means by phases out. Like, phasing out was an old one, that, or old uh, ability that they had in Mirage and whatnot, where it would be removed from play like exile, kind of like Teferi's Time Twist, where it would be exiled until the end of turn and then come back in. Gotcha. But it wasn't an exile, it was just phased out. Gotcha. So it's another bucket like exile, that's in the game that is not actually playable from unless the card specifically said in phased out or something like that. Gotcha. Uh, Champion of the Parish? Mm -hmm. uh, whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on. Now that would be good guy in the newer set, especially with like Lovestruck Beast and whatnot. Oh yeah. Yeah, he creates those one one humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Ooh. Fungusaur. Fungusaur! Yes. He is he is a fungusaur. Yeah, pretty much. What does he do? Uh whenever Fungusaur is dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Nice! So he's kinda like the steel hide uh dre steel hide hydra. Yeah. Wait, oh right, I have another pack. I thought I opened my second one. Nope, just so excited about the first one. Woo! Village Bell Ringer? Uh -huh. It's an ox with six horns for some reason. Phantom Bear. <laughs> Phantasmal Bear. Yeah. Reminds me of one of the moves in Brawlhalla. One of the beast guys. Yeah. Nest Invader. Untapped target land. Ooh, wow, that's, that's fun. Especially things like uh, Lotus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a skull clamp. Not a face hugger, it's a skull clamp. Skull hugger. <laughs> Elixir of Immortality. Pay two and then shuffle it back in from your. Oh. Shuffle Elixir of Immortality and your graveyard into your library. Oh my yeah. god! Yo! <laughs> and it's only two, three One mana. mana. and then two to actually cast. And you also keep five life. Yeah. yeah that's good. It'd be a really good one to burn mana. And if like you just have a ton of mana saved up or yeah. you haven't been able to play anything. Right. Ooh, there's a good one. The... Frexian Plague Lord. Sacrifice Fexian Plagord. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. Holy cow. Or you can just sacrifice a creature. <laughs> yeah. And, and it gets minus one, minus one. Oh, there we go. Balefire Liege. Yeah. This one's actually worth some money too. Because yeah. it gives all your red and white creature plus one, plus one. Yeah. That's pretty good. I've seen someone pull that before. Yeah, I did. Last, oh, that's, last box opening. That's where I saw. <laughs> yeah, I just did the last time. Oh, this one, this one feels weird. Does that feel weird to you? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it feels like it's smaller. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's like six mythics in it. That's it. Mm, that's why. <laughs> A misprinted deck. Oh, let's see here. Ooh, just like it has big head mode on. Giant Spider, Rasheen, Cold Heart, that's a good one to get. Bone Splitter, uh, Disciple of Heliod. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. And is Flash, five mod. 
Rescue from the Underworld. I know this card, and it's actually very, very good. So, last pack. Care to do the honors? Me? Last pack, three mythics. Yeah. <laughs> Just straight up three mythics in a row. Yep. Yeah, because we only got one mythic this whole box. But this is like the last one on the bottom right hand side of the booster box. So we'll see if they snuck something delicious and fun in here. I've seen it. Got very faithful. Yep. Foil! That's not foil. Dang it! <laughs> Bamboo's over again. Wake up full juice. Now, is it wake as in there's a wake of them, like a wave, or is it wake as in everybody's dead and we're having a wake? I'm pretty sure it's that one. <laughs> Kaboom! Smash those smithereens. Smash two smithereens. Oh, sorry. Whoops. That'd be weird. To, Reading. That'd be weird to, uh, to doing that. Crazy like, one, Blade Heart. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Like, I've seen some, I've seen some people play it before. Um, Alloy Mer. Yep. Rish Rishadan Footpad. Ooh. Another Sliver Hive Lord. So there is one of the mythics that is in this box, and a common foil. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> two mythics. So a two mythic box, some really good foils here, but uh, nothing too crazy, except for the, you know, Teferi's Protection, uh, Master trans Transmuter's pretty good, and Ristic Study. I will go ahead and see what, what the actual cost of everything is, go through the process of uh, getting into TCG Player and producing another spreadsheet to see if we can find anything of amazing value that we missed. All right, and as you can see, this is a breakdown of all of the cards that were given uh, a value that was greater than a buck. Now, if you can see that Sliver Hive Lord, we got one of those last box, uh, Temporal Mastery, uh, my cloth, we got a coat of arms last time. So these are all worthwhile pretty well. I was able to find out that Brimstone Dragon is about a dollar. Teferi's Protection, which we got this time around, was $28. And then some $3 and under cards, a $14 Amulet of Vigor, that one was pretty good. Some $3 and under other cards, uh, Cage Sun was four and a half, as well as Eshnod's Altar and uh, Triumph of the Hordes. Now the Rhystic Study surprised me. If you can see now that uh, TCG Player has finally updated their database so this rmb1 stands for retail mystery box one there is a difference between the retail mystery box and the convention mystery box the convention mystery box has those test play cards the mystery booster box does not that is available in retail right now so this is what is standard throughout all of the mystery boxes the mb1 and these retail exclusives are the ones that are replacing those tester cards. So if you can see, we have a total of about $151 of total value. Now this one didn't feel as much. It didn't feel as value packed as the last one, but the last one was had uh, a, about the same value, only about $12 more. So the value in this set is there. And it is worthwhile to go out and get these uh, if you could find them for about $100, $110. If you're going to go for more than that, just be wary that you're going to be getting about equal value out of it that you will be uh, dumping into it. All right. Thanks for joining me. Please like, subscribe, click on the bell notification to get future updates on future videos that are coming out, as well as stay tuned for more videos from me and Little Bob. Thank you very much.